In Wales, there is perhaps no bigger stage than the Millennium Stadium. And the man they nicknamed Alfie, capped a hundred times for his country, had star billing here. He leads us through the corridors he once knew so well. Um, in here, was it? What's this room, in here? No, it wasn't that one. <laughs> ah, here it is, the smell. Back down to the medical room where in 2006, in tears before his coach, beneath this most public of arenas, came the most private of moments. So he brought you down here and what happened? We just sat down, we had a couple of cans and, and basically I told him um, why Jem had left me and what I was going through. And I just felt, like I say, I told him I attempted suicides and just everything, basically uh, my life was falling apart. And I felt I just... Was he the first person in the rugby world that you told yeah. you were gay? Yeah. yeah. And what was his reaction when you said that? I don't think he even blinked. But it would be another three years before he finally declared publicly that he was gay. So a man in his 30s in 21st century Britain comes out as gay. So what? Well, in the world of rugby, that was, and still is, a very big deal indeed. Probably the scariest moment in my life, you know. People may define a rugby player's life as being scary as standing in front of, of maybe a hacker, um, but tell me the hacker was like doing ring a ring or rosies compared to, um, compared to what I was feeling that weekend. He was a huge figure in the sport. Captain of Wales, captain of the British Lions, combative, charismatic and married. In the machismo world of rugby, Alfie played the part brilliantly and then he came out. The first and still the only international rugby player ever to have done so. That's nice, isn't it? Sort of Where'd they sell the popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Cardiff this week comes a stage play documenting his life, a co-production by National Theatre Wales and the Out of Joint Theatre Company. We joined him as he met the cast, posed for photos, and then quietly took a seat, his boyfriend Ian behind him, for a preview. First up, the scene where Gareth finally admits to his wife... I need to tell you I'm gay. Gay? Yes. We have sex? I know it's a shock, but there's nothing you or me or anyone else can do about it. Now, I can look you in the eye and tell you I have never slept with another woman, which is God's own truth, I haven't. I do love you. What's going through your mind now? Um, it's, I don't know, it's so powerful to me um, that it's, it's kind of mind blowing really. Um, but the one emotion I get, like I've, when I spoke to the cast, is it's really easy to see the character play in me, which I thought would be the hardest thing. But the hardest thing is actually seeing the other characters because it's reliving of the memories that I, of what other people went through because I've dealt with things that I went through. It's almost haunting, really. So you told your wife, and then you told your family. Yeah. And Gareth Thomas's candor has won him many admirers, from chat show hosts to the Newport dentist, who apparently rebuilt his front teeth for free. Look at that fairly white smile. Fairly white smile. It's great, because I never have to clean them anymore, either, because they just stay white, anyway. <laughs> There's even long been talk of a Hollywood biopic. Is there a risk that this is all a bit over the top, you know, the documentaries, the books, the possibility of a film, now the play, you are one man who's come out as gay, and, and in that respect, you're hardly unique. Yeah, and I, 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 there's never one minute in my entire life have I ever said I'm unique. If I keep getting letters, or if I keep getting messages from people who are still taking strength from my story, who are still, who are still finding it difficult and struggling, then do you know what, then, then I'll keep doing what, what I do because in this world, it's still illegal in I think 78 countries to be gay. So you know what, if that's, if that's still a, a fact, then you know what, maybe this play or maybe other things that I, will, what I do in my life will maybe change that a little way as well. He's moved back to his hometown of Bridgend from where he tours schools with an anti-bullying programme. He's something of a folk hero in these parts, 
but remains grounded, says his boyfriend Ian, an events manager who helps out occasionally at Gareth's old rugby club. Well, as the man I fell in love with he is, he's behind closed doors, he'll get, he'll get home, who loves nothing more than putting his onesie on, sit there, farting, picking his nose, like every sort of grumpy old git does. And what was it you say? He, he leaves the house tits and, tits and teeth. All tits and teeth, comes back grumpy. But he's lovely, he's adorable. We interviewed Ian yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but that was an experience. Shall I tell you what he said? He said you're all uh, tits and teeth when you go out, <laughs> and when you're back home, you're you're in your onesie farting and picking your nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's about right, because that's what he tells me every single day. But it, you know what? It, 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 and I, I and I say to Ian the exact same thing. I tell him, whoever and whatever people make me out to be, I truly believe I am. All I am is a is a kid from Bridgend who is talented at playing rugby, who just so happened to be gay and just so happened to find the confidence and the strength of the, in the people around me that I thought to myself, do you know what? I don't need to live a lie anymore and I don't want to live a lie anymore. And because of them, I told the truth. But underneath all of that, I'm no different to anyone else. Once a towering presence in Welsh rugby, now commanding a whole new audience. Come on, Ian. Quite a story for the kid from Bridgend. <laughs> 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 <laughs>